All right, well today we're gonna to look at section 5.4, how to divide some decimals. We're gonna go right into it and see how to do examples such as this. Now, if you were faced with this type of problem, 370.4 divided by eight, if you didn't have the decimal there, would you be able to solve the problem? Would you be able to do the divisions? Yeah. Yeah. How would you set it up? Eight, eight outside of what? Three seventy. And you'd have that little that little box thing. Yeah, the division symbol. Well, we're going to set that up the same exact way. So we'll have three hundred seventy point four inside. Eight on the outside. We can do division exactly the same way with decimals as we did with whole numbers. The only thing you have to remember is that if you have a decimal in your number inside of our division symbol, that also needs to be translated to the top of our, our problem or the quotient. So if we have a decimal here, the first thing we're going to do is move that right up there. Then we'll do our division just like normal. How would we do our division? Let's refresh our memory on that. What would we check first? Eight by eight by eight by eight Good. You check the three, right? But that's not going to happen. Four. So into 37, you get four. Good. Then what? Uh, subtract 32 from 37. How are you getting 32? Eight, eight times four. four. So we multiply. Yeah, then we subtract, and we're going to get five. The way you know if you're doing the math correctly is if you have a number smaller than what you're dividing by. That's the way you know, without being negative. Now what are we going to do? Drop down to zero. And we repeat the process. It's called the algorithm. The algorithm is just a process that you, you do to get an answer. And we check how many times 8 goes into 50. That is 6. six. So 6 goes up here. We would subtract. We'll get 2. Again, we'll bring down that 4. Goes in how many times? 3. We're going to double check to make sure we don't have a remainder. Our answer is that's it. 46.3. So, dividing decimals works just the same thing as whole numbers as long as you remember that that decimal place needs to be carried up into the quotient. Okay. How about we do a couple more together and we'll keep on going after that. Okay, so I've already set up for you. What's the first thing you're going to do, please? Line the Put the decimal on the decimal. Okay, that's important. we got to do that. Make sure we're putting that decimal right up there, right above where it is now. Hey, by the way, what number goes there? Zero. Zero. So if we check 32 into 8, we can put a zero up there. If it doesn't go in, that's fine. How about 32 into 83? How much is that going to be? Twice. Five. Twice. You could, you could estimate, right? Use 30 if you'd like to. 30, 60, not up too, too much. So 60, that's two times. And then we'll multiply, we'll get 64. Of course, if we subtract, how much do we get there? 16. All right. Um, no? 19. Yeah, it looks like 19 to me. We'll bring down that 2, and then we check again. How many times is 32 going to 192? Estimate with a 30 if you'd like. Six. Bless you. 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, yep. one, probably six times. So six times, that's 12. We'll carry our one. We get 19. If I subtract, I get zero. So my answer again is 0.26 or 0 0.26. By the way, does it still work if I have negative numbers? Yes. Why don't you try a couple of these on your own? Try this one for me. Mm -hmm. 
you know what? Actually, we'll do, let's do them together just to make sure we get this down. I'll give you some to try on in, on your own just a little bit. Uh, first thing, when we're setting up division, even though this one's smaller and positive, we're going to put this on the outside of our division symbol, and inside we put our 15.89. Real quick question, is our answer going to be positive or negative, do you negative. think? Negative. negative. Why negative? Because the negative. Negative over positive. So the division rule for sine says that I don't really have to worry about the signs here as long as I know my answer is going to be negative. So I put that negative up there first. That will help us out a little bit. What's the first thing we're going to do? Put the decimal on top. Okay. So I gotta do that. Make sure our decimal is in the quotient somewhere, that's important. We don't want to lose track of that thing. Then we're gonna start dividing. What's the first number we're gonna get? 14. 14 goes into 15 how many times? Once. We'll multiply, we'll get 14, we'll subtract, we'll bring down the 8. Once. Once. We multiply, we get 14. We subtract, we get 4. We bring down the 9. Are you still okay so far? Yes. How many times does 14 go into 49? Three. Three times. Three times. But wait a second. Four. Four times? No, that'd be three. Three. Yeah. No. Isn't it if it goes over you add a zero? Wait a second, let's keep something straight here. We have going into this number three times, yes? Yes. We multiply, we get 12. We multiply, we add, we get 42. But wait a second, when I subtract, I get 7. No, but wait, we have a decimal place. What we can do, what we can do with decimals, we can put zeros at the end of numbers. It doesn't change it, right? Mm -hmm. Let's add some zeros on this thing. If we put a zero at the end of this problem, we can now bring a zero down and continue our problem for as long as it takes, if, if necessary. I'll erase this carryover. I don't want to confuse that with anything. In decimals, you never have a remainder. You'll just continue going until you find an answer or until you get a repetition. We'll see some of those in just a bit. Does 14 go into 70? Yeah. Yes. Five times. Five even? Yes. So we'll put our 5, we'll multiply, we'll get the 20, we get 7, we subtract, we get 0. Sorry, I know that's squished down there. So our final answer is what? Negative 1.135. That's it. Negative 1.135. Would you raise your hand feel okay with that one? Why did you get minus 42? Well, every time you do one of these numbers, you have to multiply. So 14 times 3 is 42. Okay, let's try one more together. Hey, by the way, what number is going on the inside of our division symbol? Negative. Do I need to put the negative? Let me ask you a question. Yes. Is our quotient going to be positive or negative? Positive. So as soon as you calculate that sign initially, you don't have to put those negatives anymore. I know for a fact that my answer is going to be positive. You with me? So ignore those negatives. You've already done that part. You're going to do 2.808 and you're going to do 104. Okay, folks, stick with me. First thing we're going to do is what? Minus decimal. Okay, we got it. You got it. So before we even get to work, I want to make sure that my decimal is there. Next thing we do is our division if we can. Now, of course, 104 doesn't go into 2. It doesn't go into 28, but it does go into 280. How many times do you think? Twice. twice. Yeah, probably just twice. But, oh, wait. Whoa. Hang on. If I do this right here, zero. if it doesn't go in there, it doesn't go in there, it goes in here, can I do that? Yeah. No, 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 zero there. This is where people make kind of a big mistake. When they're going through this, if you can't divide a number, technically you're supposed to put a zero there. Now normally when you're dealing with whole numbers, it really doesn't matter if a zero is right here. But as soon as you start going past a decimal, yes it matters if you're going to put a zero between some other number and a decimal. It moves that place value over. So in our case, here's how you'd write this. You'd say, does 104 go into 2? No. Does 104 go into 28? No. You have to put a zero there. 
It's like a place value holder. You're not going to get 0.2, you're going to get 0 0.02. Is there a difference between 0 0.2 and 0 0.02? Yes. Uh, yeah. Huh? Look at your bill. Do you remember? <laughs> you remember? Ha, 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 ha. That's pretty good. I, I worked that in there somehow. Now you get 0 .02, 0 0.002 dollars. Just this thing is 0 0.002 dollars. Ah, oh, it's the best. Okay, yeah, it goes into point. <laughs> Zero two, not point two, but point zero two. There is a big difference there. You have to have that zero. Not your head. If you see why you have to have that zero. Shake your head if you don't. Yes, no. Yes. Okay. Continue to multiply. We're going to get two o eight seventy two. Bring down the eight. We do bring down the eight, and we check hundred four into seventy two. I'm guessing it probably goes in seven times. Yeah. So I'm guessing, because I'm estimating with 100. Go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 700, probably seven times. When we multiply, you get 728. We subtract, we get zero. Do I need to add a zero on the end of this number? No. No, no so this is it. Do we have a positive or a negative? Positive. Because we've already calculated that sign, 0 0.027. 0 .0, not 0 0.27, 0 0.027. That's 10 times different right there. Would you raise your hand feel okay so far? All right. Let's continue to move on a little bit. Yeah. Where at? Well, because I know this is division, right? And I know I'm dividing a negative by a negative. I know a negative time divided by negative is a positive, right? So we can do the sign like in our head first and omit the signs from here so we don't need to write them. As long as you calculate that, like on this one, we knew this was going to be a negative, right? So I wrote that negative first and then I didn't write them down here at all because I knew that was going to be a negative before I even started. I know this one's going to be a positive before I even start. So we're, we're identifying the sign first, then we're doing the math on it. Does that work? Okay. Let's, try, uh, let's try one more together. I'll show you why it works and then we'll... Let's do 29.585 divided by 4.85. Let's set this up the same way we did these other problems. So the first thing we'll do is make a division problem like this. Can you tell me what number is going to go on the inside? 29.85. And 4.85. Now, Stop and look for a second. Normally, normally what you'd be doing on every other example, you'd be putting this decimal place right up there, right? Yeah. However, does this one look different than the first four or five examples we did? Yes. How is it different? Two decimals. Yeah, here we didn't divide by a decimal. Here we didn't divide by a decimal or here or even here. But here now or here. Now we are divided by decimal. This isn't going to work the same way that these ones did. We have to somehow translate this to look like these ones. Fortunately for us, if there's a very simple way we can do it, as long as you remember that you can do this. What we're going to do is we're going to move this decimal place to make it look like these ones. We're going to move it over until it becomes a whole number. You're going to count the number of spaces that you need to move. How many spaces do I need to move?